go. So welcome to the Level and Abortion Advanced Sidewalk Training Webinar on the topic of how to achieve full sidewalk coverage year round. All glory be to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's just dive in with a quick uh, prayer here. We go to Psalm 140. Uh, Deliver us, Lord, from the wicked. Preserve us from the violent, from those who plan evil in their hearts, who stir up conflicts every day, who sharpen their tongues like serpents, venom of asps upon their lips. Keep us, Lord, from the clutches of the wicked. Preserve us from the violent who plot to trip us up. The arrogant have set traps for us. Villains have spread a net, laid snares for us by the wayside. But we say to the Lord, you are, you are our God. Listen, Lord, to the words of our prayer. Our revered Lord, our strong helper, our helmet on the day of battle. Lord, do not grant the desires of the wicked. Do not let their plots succeed. Around us, they raise their proud heads. May the mischief they threaten overwhelm them. May God rain burning coals upon them, cast them into the grave, never more to rise. Slanderers will not survive on earth. Evil will quickly entrap the violent. For we know the Lord will secure justice for the needy, rights for the poor. Then the just will give thanks to your name. The upright will dwell in your presence. Um, amen. Uh, in Jesus, we trust in you. We do pray uh, for the building up uh, of the kingdom of God. We do pray uh, for an end uh, to abortion, uh, the ongoing mass murder of the preborn and exploitation of pregnant moms in need. We pray that it would end. Um, as soon as possible, even immediately by your miraculous grace. Uh, God, we pray this uh, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Blessed Mother, Amen. pray for us. All you holy saints and holy angels, pray for us. Amen. Father and Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. All right. So I'm Jim Havens, Director of Lovell and Abortion. Um, Lovellandabortion.com is where you can find other training videos. We've got some basic training videos, other advanced training videos, things like that. Um, but if you've been tracking with us for a while, you know all about that. And you also know about Lorraine White, who is with us tonight, co-director of Rock, Lovewell and Abortion. Um, Rock being short for Rochester, New York, and the ministry um, that takes place up there on the sidewalks, which is incredible. Um, so Lorraine is co-director there right now, along with Ellen Duncan, who has also been in past advanced training videos. Um, so we're going to dive right in on this topic of how to achieve full sidewalk coverage year round. And uh, just to start with a little bit of vision to say that um, I think in some of the promotion for this, I put it out as, um, do you want to help or, or how you can help end abortion in your local area? And this seems like um, quite a claim, you know, but the fact is, is that I absolutely believe that what we are talking about tonight is, um, is the number one thing that we can do to really work on the ground in our local communities to end abortion as soon as possible. Um, and by end abortion, again, abortion that we define as um, it's the direct intentional killing of the child in the womb, which is government sanctioned in our day for the past almost 48 years now um, in the US. We just had the 100th anniversary of abortion, uh, government sanctioned abortion worldwide. Um, 48 years here in the U.S. And um, so this ongoing mass um, mass murder of the pre-born um, being killed by the thousands every single day, um, that that's the reality that we're in. Almost about 3,000 a day are being killed and 9-11 every day. We don't want to be desensitized to it. So we have to remember the reality um, that we're in. Um, if it was a 9-11 in terms of a terrorist attack, um, I'm sure we'd be um, taking a lot more notice as as a people, as a culture, as individuals. Um, so so we've got to try to come to grips with what's really going on and what is our human responsibility, what is our Christian calling. So to try to end this, what we're talking about is getting to the point where abortion would be illegal in law and also unthinkable in culture. Um, and, and just to, I guess, set some things straight on that. Sometimes people will have this lie. And I know that there were times where this, I was, uh, this lie was alive in, in my heart and mind where it was like, um, well, it seems like we can never end abortion. So maybe, um, we just got to get good about like dealing with the fact that it's around, you know, as I heard one 
um, priest say when I was in a meeting with him a couple of years ago. Um, he said, we just need to, we need to figure out how to minister in light of abortion going on rather than be talking about actually trying to end it. Um, and so, you know, it's distressing that this is a lie that is so prevalent, but we've got to check our own hearts and minds um, and eradicate it um, as much as we possibly can, hope, hopefully eliminating it altogether. And one easy way to do that is to look at um, something that would be similar. And something that is not similar, let me name this, in scripture, at one point in the gospel, it says that um, you know poverty will always be with you, the poor will always be with you. Okay, so um, understand that um, there are some things like that. There are some um, evils uh, that, that, will, that will persist um, and that there's no perfecting it in this life. Is abortion one of those things? Um, and and, and I, I would say absolutely not. And the reason we can say that is because we can see the distinction with another um, human rights atrocity that was taking place in the, U in the United States, um, which is slavery, right? And when we look at that human rights atrocity, that sheds some real light about how we ought to look at abortion and how we ought to respond to it. Um, back in the day, slavery was baked in to the American culture from the beginning, right? It was part of the economic system. It was it was part of every um, every everything within the culture of the, of the U.S. Um, and uh, and while there were abolitionists that were working um, to try to end it, there were many people telling them it's always going to be here. Give it up, you know. Don't don't you know? You guys are radical. You're extremists. All of these things. Um, but the fact is is that they were right to press on for the end of slavery. Um, thanks be to God that these abolitionists kept on and persevered and, and went with that conviction that they knew was true, that this was evil and it needed to be ended. And so um, they kept going. And uh, by God's grace, um, not only did it become illegal in law, but then there was a messy, quite a messy period after that for many, many decades before it's become unthinkable in culture. Right. And so um, now nobody's advocating for slavery. Right. Nobody's calling for it to become legal again or it's unthinkable nobody would ever even be talking this way and so um so look at that an ongoing human rights atrocity that was so prevalent and baked in our culture in the u.s and now not only did it become illegal but now it's unthinkable so we can get there but we've got to do our part that's the only way it happens we've got to be the hands and feet of christ participating with god's grace that he is pouring out uh, to do our part. And I believe that this is how we can do our part locally to really make the biggest impact. Certainly, we need um, the, the pregnancy help centers. We need uh, medical um, help centers. We need um, so material resources, medical resources. We need maternity home resources. We need all kinds of resources for these pregnant moms in need. Absolutely. And that really truly is the job of the church to build these things up. So that's one thing that is um, that is that is very much um, needed. That is very much vital. But going along with that is the the local sidewalk ministry on the ground in front of these abortion centers that can point the way to those resources for those pregnant moms. And even if there's not a lot of resources, usually most local areas, if you look around, and we've done um, we've done some past uh, videos on local resources. But um, but even if it's even if it's a little bit thin. In your area, there's always going to be some, uh, but even if it's a little bit thin, being there on the sidewalk is still vital because you being there, um, you you being there at the, the hands and feet of Christ for them in that moment that is so important. Um, you can point the way for them. God can use you in miraculous ways. And again, if you look at the past videos, we get into all of that about how effective this ministry is. But we point the way to where the resources are, and we help those pregnant moms however we can. Um, and help them to turn their heart back towards their children, which is where it wants to be, which is where they want to be anyway. Um, so we've got to come alongside them as a community. The only way um, that we can do that um, with, with the fullness is to be right there on the sidewalk to encounter them there and, and to be Christ to them there and invite them and then help them as much as they will allow us to. Um, so here's what we're talking about tonight is how do we achieve full sidewalk coverage year round? Obviously, an individual can't be there every single hour. These local places are open. These abortion centers are open locally year round. Um, you can't be 
it is not your, your full-time job to be there every single day. <laughs> um, and there's in many locations, there's multiple locations as well. So how do we really build up a community effort? That's what we're talking about tonight because it's gonna take a community effort of a lot of people to be there on the sidewalk year round. And it is doable um, that our churches can really play a, a, a vital role here and turn people out to plug into this um, network to be on the sidewalk year round, full coverage, everybody going in and out. Um, and again, I would refer you to other videos about the effectiveness of all of this. We, we go into it in depth there. But for now, just to understand that that's what this is about, is how do we actually put the pieces together to get, to get it building towards that full coverage? Um, so that's the goal, full coverage. And by that, I would say um, what we're talking about here is at least one sidewalk counselor there every single hour, each of these local abortion centers are open, and one prayer partner there with that one sidewalk counselor at least. So at least two people there. Um, and in prayer and in loving outreach, every single hour, these local abortion centers are open year round. You can think about it as like a 365 days for life campaign. We've got to love these moms enough to be there for them 365. And, and quite frankly, even those that are working in there, we've got to love them enough to be there for them. We know that they're lost, they're on the wrong track, but for God's grace, we could be in that same situation. Wouldn't we want somebody reaching out for us and the abortionist as well? Um, Jesus calls us to love our enemies. If we really believe in, in Jesus and what he has proclaimed to us, then this ought to be a ministry that is, um, that is important to the church everywhere. So, um, so that's what we're talking about tonight. So, um, so let's just get into history a, a little bit. And Lorraine, I want to have you speak to this some. So we started off in, in Rochester trying to figure this out and say, okay, how can we get to full coverage out there? And a lot, we basically tried had trial and error in a lot of different ways and figured out a lot of things. But um, we, we basically um, came up with some best practices that we found looking back on it because we were able to achieve a point where at the main abortion center downtown, the headquarters of Planned Parenthood of Central and Western New York, um, we got to the point where we we're pretty close to 100 mm -hmm. percent uh, mm -hmm. before COVID hit. And now things have changed mm -hmm. a bit. So things have probably fluctuated some. Um, but, um, but then we also were building out at other locations mm -hmm. locally, um, mm -hmm. you know, one about, I think almost, probably almost half we got to at some point. And then mm -hmm. the other one, mm -hmm. we were just kind of getting going on. So, mm -hmm. um, so Lorraine, you could, you could talk to us a little bit about, um, how things are looking now and, and looking back at best practices that we've discovered. Sure. Um, but I just want to say before, um, before I turn it over to you is that, um, you know, the strategy that we've sort of discovered in this looking back is that. Um, to try to figure out like a leadership team that right. can build up sidewalk teams. So to try right. to empower these little sidewalk teams of people by having a leadership team that is focused on this goal of how are we going to get um, full coverage year round at these places. Um, so the key ingredients um, really are three things that we identified, a scheduling method, mm -hmm. so a way to do community outreach to let them know about that schedule and get people plugged into it, and then some ongoing engagement um, to, to be able to check in with people, make sure that people are encouraged and continuing um, to, um, to be fired up for the mission. So um, none of these things do we do perfectly, um, mm -hmm. but we kind of have, have discovered, okay, these are, the, these are the best ways that we have seen that really work in, um, in, in getting to the goal here. Um, so anything that you want to share on that, um, as you were brought in, you were brought in um, to this on the ground as a sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. counselor and then pretty quickly you were in involved in the schedule coordinating and, and you mm -hmm. took over the whole schedule coordinating in rochester so um so you're a great one to really speak to all this so what has your experience been on this and um and what can you share with us sure thanks jim um as jim mentioned to know whether you're getting to full coverage you got to measure it right so the system that we have in place where people can actually log in and schedule themselves is incredibly important. Let's use technology to our advantage. We migrated from you know, a grassroots effort of having just a spreadsheet and knowing where people were coming in and out. That quickly became a bit cumbersome as we grew, which was a good problem to have. Jim vetted a great system that we use now. And as Jim mentioned, and this is one really key thing, so if you're starting to organize this in your community or you're just starting to even get sidewalk coverage in your community, that's great because you can use a system that is, um, automatic or electronic, get that schedule out to people. So 
the number one thing that people tell us is I don't want to go out there by myself or I don't know when to go. So having a schedule in front of you that you can very easily and um, very streamlined get it out to people, whether it's email or whether you have another system or another platform, because somehow visually seeing where the pockets are helps people to start to wrap their schedule around that or wrap their day to day or when I can plug in. So having that schedule, getting it out to the community, and then continuing to repeat that. So the schedule might change a little bit. Like some people might say, well, I'm there every third Thursday or what have you. So you can start to see the pockets. Jim talked about the leadership team. That has been tremendously important for a lot of reasons, not the least of which is to share ideas. Um, it's also to um, strengthen one another. So this ministry is one where you have ups and downs. And so in having that leadership team, it also helps incredibly in disseminating information out. So if you have some issue that's happening at one particular site, or like Jim mentioned, we want to branch out to a new site, we can communicate that to a hierarchy, if you will. And it doesn't mean some are higher and some are lower, but it just means there's people who have certain responsibilities, but then there's others that support them. You know, in the scripture, it always talks about using your talents and what talents people have that they can offer. So some are actually organized and saying, okay, I've got these three people on my um, sidewalk uh, block, if you will. So we'll get to that in a little bit about how to sort of fill that out. But having the individuals, the leadership team, being able to communicate to them, having them communicate to you what's happening on the um, on the sidewalk, sometimes there's little um, dust ups, if you will, with the community. So having the community and the ministry being able to talk about that and how do we react to it? How do we do it in a way that's peaceful, law abiding and, and women oriented? So again, the scheduling, the outreach, and then also having the ability to communicate um, any kind of uh, best practices. And then I would say a third part, and I think Jim, we're probably going to get to this too, is um, having uh, the sidewalk partners. So being able to then fill out sidewalk blocks, if you will. So if I adopt a whole day and then it's my responsibility as a sidewalk leader to then say, okay, I'm going to go and actually find people who can come on Tuesday mornings and Tuesdays afternoons. Um, there's not a lack of interest in doing this. There's really just a need to sort of connect people's motivation to actually doing it. And so the ability to have these sidewalk blocks that you can then fill out or sidewalk um, segments of your schedule, that's incredibly important too, because otherwise you kind of hit a plateau. You say, oh, we got to 50% and mm, you know, we're also losing people. You have to think about that attrition too. So um, being able to have these sidewalk captains that then adopt these sidewalk blocks. And we did that when we started to see some losses because of um, COVID and people's inability to get out. But we quickly were able to, through this um, structure, say, okay, we're losing people at this particular time. Can you do an outreach and try to fill that back in? What was great, the benefit, you know, there's a silver lining in some of this COVID stuff, is some people said, gee, I'm not working as much or I'm working from home. I have more flexibility. So we were able to discover some of that through this structure that we had in place. So I don't know if that helps sort of give a little bit about the background and some of the the uh, the way that we started things and the best practices. So. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah, we appreciate that. And um, and yeah, uh, let's get, just kind of go back through and we'll dive even, um, I guess, a level deeper, get a little bit more uh, granule on it. We don't want to <laughs> overwhelm anybody or make it too right. complicated, but at the same time, uh, we do want to give some detail to this um, because there are some important details to to share and to consider. And um, again, these are suggestions on things we've learned. Um, if you think of a of a better way, awesome. If, if you have a different thing you want to try, that's great. I think the most important thing is that we identify this as a goal in our local community. And we do have a team of people that is going to be dedicated to doing whatever it takes to try to achieve that goal, mm -hmm. to keep striving for to achieve that goal. So um, when it comes to how to begin, it's about building that leadership team. Um, and, and so I would say, um, and I guess it goes without saying, you, you ought to be on the sidewalk already yourself right and so um and also those that um you'd want to bring into this leadership team if they if, if you've never been on the sidewalk if they've never been on the sidewalk um you'd want to start by going back through the basic training videos or and some of the other advanced training videos and just kind of um getting up to this point where okay you're on the sidewalk um things are going well individually now it's time to get some organization get some leadership and try to build up um, other people to get to the sidewalk and to um, and to be there year round. So um, so with the leadership team, um, what you have right now in Rochester is, is I think a, a good um, a good model, which is um, two people 
um, really co-directors. Um, and the way that the um, they're kind of um, uh, divided based on role, based on tasks. So a co-director that is mainly focused on the, uh, the scheduling, a co-director that is mainly focused on the outreach piece. Um, you could also do it instead a different way where you could have a director that's going to kind of be you know, focused on, on both maybe, mm -hmm. um, and then have an assistant director that's going to be more um, to be assisting with the tasks and um, however, however it works. But I would say mm -hmm. um, to, to find one other person. So I think this really works well with two people. Um, could you build a bigger team? I guess you could, but there's no need to. I think two people um, leading this um, is a great way to begin. Um, so then you need a scheduling method. Um, and that's, um, you know, somebody, you'd, you'd want somebody doing this, um, uh, who's directing this schedule method, who's really on fire for the mission, um, has good communication skills, good computer skills in data entry, because they're going to be inputting names and such. Um, and also good to identify a backup person up front as well and start kind of training them in it just in case you ever are going to be on vacation or you know you just need some help in it or whatever it has to be or it has to be handed off to somebody else it's good to have a backup person so that's always a good thing to keep in mind but the the software that we have found that works really well is called volunteer scheduler pro volunteer scheduler pro now, i tried a lot of different um, mm -hmm. options and as lorraine mentioned we we were originally doing it i think on like a google um Excel file. Yeah. Um, yeah. We have these Google Excel files and they work pretty good to get us mm -hmm. off the ground. Um, but then it's, it is good to, to find some software that, that's going to help you out a, a little bit more, have, have, uh, make it a little bit easier, have some more things automated, shoots out email reminders to people mm -hmm. when their shift is going to be stuff like that. Um, so volunteer scheduler pro out of all the things I've tried, that's been the most intuitive and that's been the best that I have, I have seen. Um, and so they, they have some great tutorial videos on there, their customer service um, helpline. You can always call them and they're right there to answer the phone and, and to help you out. Um, and again, it can be a, a very minimal thing, just a basic schedule for people to be able to see. So you can send it out to people and they can see the open slots or this thing can be maximized um, all the way to be like utilizing substitutes where when somebody's going to be not when they're not going to be able to be at their shift, they can go online and, and uh, just hit a button to let people know they're not going to be there. It shoots out an email to substitutes, a whole substitute list then gets it and somebody plugs in. Um, so there's lots of different um, ways that even maximize that software. Swapping shifts people can do on there, stuff like that, but it can also be very minimal as well. Lorraine, anything, um, you, you've been in the Volunteer Schedule Pro now mm -hmm. longer than I have. So um, what what uh, what would you like to share with us about the software? Yeah, I would say that particular software is very user-friendly, very intuitive. I went and looked at a couple tutorials and then I just got in there and started, you know, working in it. And it's very intuitive. You kind of slide things over. You could see all your volunteers. You can add volunteers. It's very web-based. It's a web-based program. So if you can shop online, if you can, you know, do things online, you can do this. It's very, very easy. And I think, as Jim mentioned, one of the things that's really been critical that's also helped us to have retention is this ability, two things. One, to get the reminders out, because I'm sure everybody's very busy and having that reminder, it goes out automatically. People sometimes respond back to me and say, yep, I'll be there. Oh my goodness, I forgot. Can you get me a sub? And then I can do that as the scheduler or they can do it and go it in, go in and do that. So the reminder and then also the ability to ask for a sub or a swap because people are very committed to their time slot and they want to make sure that someone is out there. And they often know that if they're not there, there isn't a second person or if there is, they need somebody there for an, another person. So people are very committed to that and this system allows you to very easily go in and ask for that swap or that request. The other thing it allows you to do is to be offline for a bit. So if someone says, I'm gonna be moving or I have surgery or I have to take care of somebody, we just take you off temporarily and then you can automatically get back on. That's helped us with retention as well because Sometimes when people come off, it's like it's really hard to get back on. But if there's a finite time period, they kind of get a gentle reminder, you know, are you going to come back at that same time slot or another time slot? The other thing that's helped us, too, is you can visually see and sort by location. So as Jim mentioned, we first started with one location. And that's one I think the key successes, too, is, you know, if you can start to try to fill out the full schedule for one particular location, then you kind of get the hang of things. 
um, you can start to see that you're not spread too thin as you get more volunteers in the community build at a second location. We're at three locations right now in Rochester. Um, hopefully we'll <laughs> close one of those locations soon, but um, being able to see the different locations helps too because some people want to plug into one location or they want to plug into two locations. So the system is very easy to do that. It sounds kind of complicated, but it's really easy. You just you can see everything and sort it by location. You could sort it by shift. Um, some people have told me, well, I can only do it on the third Thursday or whatever it is. And then it also helps us to see, gee, we've got a ton of coverage at this one particular time block. Can we go in and optimize that? That's one of the things we've gotten better at is optimizing. So we say, gee, there's so many people at this time slot. Can we just shift them over to this other location? And so I'll make the, the calls or, or ask for people to do that after I have a call with like the leadership team. Um, and the other thing that's really great about the system is the ability to not only see where people are, but also um, if they have any special requests, they can kind of come back to us through that same system. And in the need for a scheduler is important. It's not very time consuming, but it is necessary to be very responsive. So someone might send me an email this evening that says, I need a swap for tomorrow, and it automatically comes up. So there's not a lot that you have to do, but it is time sensitive. So to Jim's point, the two co-directors, it's good that one can be focused on that and another person can be focused on some things that are a little bit more uh, predictable, if you will. So so that's really, it's, it's a very, I think it's an excellent system. Um, it meets our needs and we're you know growing in terms of how many locations we're at, so. Great, yeah, so again, that's called Volunteer Scheduler Pro. So. Um, so that's the scheduling side. So that's the big piece to kind of get things rolling, get the schedule. Now communicate that schedule to people right. so that they can plug in um, to the schedule. So the community outreach piece. So I, I would say you want somebody who's going to be overseeing this um, this task, somebody in this role who's mm -hmm. on fire for the mission once again. You know, I, I think if they're not on fire for the mission, <laughs> the will to do this is right. going to so you, you want to find somebody in both of these roles that is really on fire for this. Um, and in this particular role, I would say someone who um, maybe tends towards being more extroverted or um, maybe well-connected um, in the local pro-life movement and or with local churches, something like that, because you are going to want um, somebody who, who is able to, ha they have people to send that schedule out to. Um, mm -hmm. And if they don't already have those people, they can identify where those pockets, the best places to go are to get that in, um, get that information out there to groups of people that would be uh, most willing to respond with a with a yes and to, and to plug into this. So, um, so somebody who either already has those connections built out pretty well, or um, is is able to go out and make those connections. Um, but you want um, really somebody who's going to be able to um, be focused on that outreach piece to go communicate that schedule well and invite people into that effectively. Um, so if there's already a 40 Days for Life campaign going, um, it might be as simple as, as the leaders of that 40 Days for Life campaign in your community, um, simply saying, discerning like, okay, let's extend this out to a 365 days for life. Um, so I, I, would in, I would encourage you to reach out to local 40 Days for Life if you want to see an on, uh, ongoing year-round presence locally and, um, and talk to them about it. Reach out to those local 40 Days for Life leaders or if you are one, um, consider um, doing what you're doing, but but expand it to 365 days for life. Um, especially a lot of these 40 days for life um, campaigns now, they've been going on for over 10 years, by God's mm -hmm. grace, thanks be to God, right? So um, it's a great opportunity to say, okay, let's take it to the next level, let's extend this thing out. Um, so um, you can also ask um, par participants that way if they are willing to continue year mm -hmm. round. So those who are already plugged into the 40 days for life, that's the, that's a perfect group to um, to kind of present this to and say, okay, you guys are already in these slots um, on this schedule for this 40 days campaign. Uh, would you be willing to to do this year round as a as a commitment? I mean, there's still people going in and out of here year round, and you're needed, you know. And just um, see what the response might be. But that's a great place to start, I think. Um, other ways to um, to fill the schedule. And uh, Lorraine, you can you can jump in here, especially mm -hmm. with this first one, which is to identify some leaders um, on the sidewalk in terms of sidewalk captains, where if somebody's <laughs> going to take a certain shift. At one point, um, I, I remember we had people where it was like, okay, we're going to do sidewalk captains for two-hour blocks. Mm -hmm. We had a lot of people that were signed up to lead two-hour mm -hmm. blocks. Um, some would say, hey, I can only do one hour. Okay, we'll make them a sidewalk captain for a one-hour block. 
And then that means that they're now going to be empowered to go out to their networks of people and invite them. They can invite them to any anything to plug into the schedule, but exactly. specifically to come join their sort of sidewalk team right. for that block. And that, that way they can be sort of mentored into this, especially if they've never been to the sidewalk before. What more, um, Lorraine, can you share with us about the sidewalk captains and sidewalk teams? Yeah, that, that was particularly successful at one of our locations. Um, I can remember when Jim held one of the training sessions at one of the churches and he had anybody who had been signed up as a captain raise their hands and people could identify who the captains were. And they, people literally came up to us as captains and said, hey, I want to come you know, learn more about this. And as captains, what we would do is say, you know, for the next two weeks or three weeks or whatever it was, I said, I will make myself available at any hour, any time slot that you would like to come out, or you can come out to the time slot that I've adopted, if you will. That way it's flexible. Cause I'm telling you, that's the biggest hurdle people have is just getting that first step to be out on the sidewalk. They have the, the, desire, they have the knowledge, they know it, but making that vision into a reality needs to happen by taking away the barriers. So getting them out there, adopting them as well. So as a sidewalk captain, they come out, they get um, the opportunity to sort of see what happens. We pray, um, we talk about how we interact with the moms, we talk about how we interact with the community. And as sidewalk captains, you really just give them that comfort level and then they get to see the um, great graces that you receive just being out there. So it's not all about what we're giving, we're getting so much grace from being out there. And by experiencing that firsthand, it really becomes a tangible um, fruit that we then see people saying, I'm coming back out, I'm committed. And in Greece, what we had happen was the individuals that came out to one sidewalk block with the, the sidewalk leaders, they began to become more confident in interacting with the moms themselves. And so then we literally broke out into two places at that location, one up on the street and one by the door. And then before you knew it, that individual took their own time. It just happened organically. They couldn't make it that same day. So they said, I'm going to come Fridays now. So they started their own time block. And it really happened in a way that was very um, natural. And so having these captains and having people be, um, mentored, if you will. And we say now too, we're talking about this a little bit about having an open house. Anytime you want to come out, we will find a person that will mentor you. And then the enthusiasm uh, increases, the fear decreases, and then you all of a sudden see, wow, these are real people. I got to get out there. I got to stay out there. I got to stay committed to the time period. And you're really part of this, um, this wonderful ministry, this community of people who are doing everything they can to help these moms turn away. And you have to be out on the sidewalk to be able to do that. So that's part of the sidewalk captain model is really just taking people under the wing and then seeing the fruits of it multiply. It really is like leaven in the community. Then all of a sudden we're quickly, we went from like a quarter of the coverage to almost 50% coverage at the one location through that model. And it doesn't take a lot of people. It just takes a commitment. Yeah, very good. And, and so, mm -hmm. um, and then it becomes, um, then you've got multiple ambassadors. You're multiplying right. your ambassadors who are then sharing the vision and, and sharing what you're doing, sharing the, the opportunity to, for others to plug into this. And so you want as many ambassadors as you can get that are, that are fired up for this mission, that mm -hmm. really are fired up mm -hmm. to achieve this goal of this year-round coverage at all the local abortion centers so that um, every ambassador should really be always recruiting, always inviting, always inviting, recruiting. inviting. Yes, yes. And um, that might start off with just two ambassadors with the, the leadership team of the two people. Um, but then as you get people and they get empowered on the sidewalk, you want to help them to be empowered as ambassadors mm -hmm. as well, invite others to their slot or just be sharing the schedule, sharing the vision, sharing the fruits of what's going on. And the more bold we are, um, mm -hmm. Even look, I, I'm more of an introverted type of person, and and the fact is is that it's it's harder for me to kind of be um, reaching out to people and inviting them all the time. But hey, by God's grace, I do it because I have to. You know, I realize that's what has to be done mm -hmm. if we're going to mm -hmm. achieve this goal. So I'm sending out emails. I'm doing stuff that you know it pushes me out of my comfort zone. I have to not care what maybe a lot of people <laughs> that are going to get that email might think of me. Um, but um, because they don't understand or maybe, you know, they've got different hangups or whatever, um, I don't know where people are at, but I think I'm sending it to groups of people that 
um, there'd be a lot of people that would be interested. And that's kind of the best that we can go on. Um, the folks in our church communities, hopefully there's right. a lot of people that would be interested in loving our neighbors in need like this, especially those that um, their lives are on the line um, and these moms are being so gravely exploited. In a, in a lot of ways, their lives are on the line very much as well. So um, our neighbors in extreme need, um, if we love Jesus, then it, this should make sense. This should resonate as an opportunity to really go and tangibly, concretely live out the gospel by being the hands and feet of Christ on, on these sidewalks. So, um, so again, always be inviting. Um, personal invitations is always mm -hmm. the best. So friends, family, people that we know at church, anybody that we think might be interested, personal invitations, let them know. Um, and then we've got the emails, then we've got social media, um, things like that. Um, and then, you know, things that we have experimented with would be local rallies, local mm -hmm. events. That's going to be a little bit more complicated depending on where you are with the COVID and what's happening and all that. Um, but that was that, that's something that we've experienced in and found some good fruit in. Um, but then something, Lorraine, that you just mentioned, this open house idea. Mm -hmm. When we were talking about this and you were sharing more about this open house idea and how it's being used lately, um, we, we were talking about kind of, yeah, the mentoring, the shadowing times mm -hmm. that would specifically be promoted as like an open house week. So giving like right. some de definite period of time. I mean, we're always inviting, but then to also give some sort of a period of time where to um, to, to focus people on so that they, they don't just keep putting it off and say someday, 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 right. there's actually something that's like a target, like a week, right. like this is the week for you to plug in open house week, come out to the sidewalk and get them out there and then let them know about the basic training videos that they can follow up with. Um, anything else you want to share on that vision about having open house week or open house? Week? Sure. Yeah. The open house idea came from the interest that people expressed in reaction and response to our email invites so people would say gee i'd love to be able to come out and we wanted to take away any barriers um, that we experienced when we were trying to get out on the sidewalk and so we said well why don't we create a, a structure or a, a format where the individuals who have been doing this quite a while and are open to and very which is pretty much everybody <laughs> who are open to um mentoring and guiding and training and and showing hands-on you know what the the best practices are having an open house time frame whether it's a week's time frame because we pretty much have at least one person on each day that would be able to say anybody that wants to come come uh, on that particular day and it's important if you're doing that open house type of event to have um extra coverage so what do i mean by that so you might want to have two people who are um, what we call sidewalk counselors or who are typically outreaching to the moms and the portion workers or the dads and um, other prayer partners. And here's why, because if you're interacting with somebody and trying to kind of guide them with this is how we do this or this is why we do it, not that it's structured, but there's sort of some, some um, cues, if you will, when you're out there talking to moms that you kind of pick up on over time. Um, that you want to be sharing and if you're sharing some of those things it's difficult to then also be on the spot and engage so we picked open house time slots where we knew we had at least a couple of more experienced people so that we didn't ever take our eye off of the most important person mom and baby in our ability to explain things or talk or pray or what have you so the open house has been successful it, it really does overcome this barrier which is after people make that commitment in their heart to say, I want to do this or I'd like to explore it, to getting them out there. So it's like, okay, anytime that week. And let's be honest, if they said, well, I can't make it that week, we'll make it the next week. The team is very flexible in um, welcoming them. And then you feel like, you know, instead of the first day of high school going out there and feeling like, oh my goodness, I don't know what to do. You've got somebody to sort of show you the ropes and take away that fear. And then you realize that it is so beautiful and so rewarding and so um, uplifting to be out there and say I can make a difference in somebody's life and their generations after just because I said yes I would go out there and go alongside somebody and all you have to do is pray or all you have to do is be out there so the simplicity in it um, is important to remember but also the ability to just overcome get them out there create a time period that it's you know very easy for folks to get out there and you've got someone to to walk alongside and say this is what we do this is how we do it. what do you think what are your ideas um so that it's it's really something they can experience firsthand because most of the time when someone comes out there once or twice they become 
really in their heart committed to doing this because they can't imagine the sidewalk being empty after that. They see what goes on. They see people turn around, people interact. So they, they really become committed once they're out there. Yeah, and it really is the Lord who's calling Absolutely. them to this. We really are just um, kind of the mouthpiece of that, the messenger mm -hmm. of that, to mm -hmm. kind of bring it to the to the top, you know. And so, um, um, so if if the Lord's calling people, like that's between them and the Lord, you know, if they're right. going to say yes or not. But we've got to be faithful to our part, I think, of um, of announcing it, you know, and uh, and putting it out there for folks. And letting the Holy Spirit uh, work and people to to use their freedom to say yes or no and all of that. Um, and then I, I do think there is this important piece to keep in mind as well, which is um, helping people to overcome the obstacles. Now, this is a, a little bit easier to do when it's well, it's a lot easier to do when it's the personal invitations, because then you're actually mm -hmm. talking to somebody, whether it's on the phone or in person or um, whatever on messenger or email but it's one-to-one -one, something like that where if somebody is giving a no well you can kind of ask um, you know more into that like what you know yeah what's the why not you know type of mm -hmm. a type of a uh, response and, and try to dig a little bit deeper of what it is and if there's good honesty in that relationship then they're gonna they're gonna let you know and then you can kind of speak to whatever that obstacle is um, and maybe they have a real obstacle that cannot be overcome you know, I, I know of people that they um, they're they're doing um, care of like an elderly um, mm -hmm. parent that's living mm -hmm. with them, and it's taking up all their extra time. They don't have an extra hour. Um, most people, though, we've got a little bit of fat in our schedule somewhere, mm -hmm. even if we feel like we don't. That if we really are wanting to to get out there and be the hands and feet of Christ in this mm -hmm. way, we can find that, that one hour of fat that we can trim off somewhere. You know, so to keep that in mind and try to help people to sort of um, go through that process where, um, you know, they, they might voice something that we can help them with. There, here's a good example, Lorraine, that I think um, you can speak to a bit, which is this example of, I think this grew out of um, one of the, the groups of, um, one, it's a group of moms basically in Rochester where they, they basically identified, uh, some women identified, well, if we had some childcare, this mm -hmm. would be easier for us because that's our main obstacle. So they kind of, mm -hmm got together and worked out a, a way right. to share childcare with one another so that one could watch the kids, the other one could go out for an hour um, and they can mix that up from week to week. But anything else you can share with us about that or anything else when it comes to overcoming obstacles? Yeah, that's right. There are unique obstacles for each person and each person in the stage of life that they're in. And so for moms, um, oftentimes it's just simply, who do I trust to have to take care of the children while I'm out there also helping moms. Um, and so having a network of moms where you can kind of rotate that or um, be there to support or go out in prayer, but really being able to help them say, okay, you've got these two hours, go out there, we'll do a play date, you know, we'll do something uh, faith-based. It'll be really like a family um, event, being able to support moms to support moms. Um, and also overcoming obstacles like I don't drive or um, I'm way out far. So we started kind of coordinating people who were a little bit more remote and um, making them, um, having giving them the opportunity to connect with one another, having a network system to be able to do that. Also overcoming the ability, okay, so we I don't know anybody out there. Okay, so here's how we can come get around that. Here's something you might want to do at your church. So we kind of give them, not scripted, but things that will help them engage people they already know in their community so that they can invite them with a high degree of success that they're going to come out there. So that's one of the obstacles. It's like, I don't know anybody else that's doing it. I'm trying to get people from my church to do it. Here's some of the things that we've done. People have even gotten really creative in doing like carpooling from a particular parish or a bus. Um, so people come from like, you know, um, the men's group or the rosary um, group or different groups within a church, they actually just get together and kind of carpool it. Because sometimes those are the obstacles too. Where do I park? What do I do? I don't know how this works. So the logistics, so overcoming some of the um, just day-to-day -day things like childcare, um, carpooling, I don't know anybody. So like Jim said, really listening to what are those obstacles. Sometimes they're a little more um, uh, subtle or people aren't really in touch with it or they won't really say, I'm, I'm afraid, you know, I'm afraid by, if I go out there, somebody's going to yell at me or I'm going to get harassed or I'm going to get arrested or whatever it might be. So you have to really listen for what the stated um, obstacle is versus what's the 
underlying issue and we just try to come alongside them there's a way to overcome some of this it's really the ability to identify what those obstacles are and try to say okay this is we've seen this before in the past we can actually help with this um, and then it becomes like contagious so the people who actually end up getting out there they then invite people from their circle and that's beautiful because we don't have access into certain communities that are really important to have a, a good coverage out there of having different parishes different um, you know inner city versus communities that are that are more rural everybody brings something to the table when they are actually out there and, and get committed to being on the schedule at that time so yeah, very good and uh, one thing to keep in mind on all of this is that you know we don't want to we can't get bogged down with more and more tasks uh, the, right. the folks that are leading this have to be focused on their role and stay in their lane the best they can otherwise it becomes too overwhelming so right. um, so scheduling community outreach and then, um, yeah, help overcome some obstacles some, and you can give some suggestions to help people mm -hmm. to kind of empower them to put together sort of their own child care network with some other folks. You might just be able to help them connect some dots with other people right. that might be in the same boat. Same goes for transportation, things like that. Um, but we can't say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna figure out this child care mm -hmm. thing, or this transportation mm -hmm. thing. We can't, um, it's just too much, you know? Right. So um, that, that's one thing I do wanna mention for sure is that this is all doable with all everybody on a volunteer basis. Right. I, I think people need to hear right. that because um, the only other models I, I know of yeah. that are really going year round where the sidewalk has been built out locally, um, the only ones that I have found that, that really are where there's actually people on the ground year round, um, 100% or close to it, um, is because they pay the the people to be out there sadly mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. now hey if, if, if that model works then great you know that might be the right model for a certain mm -hmm. local community what we have found though is that um you know it, it didn't seem right to be paying people to do something that we ought to be saying mm -hmm. yes to and giving ourselves to as a gift of self mm -hmm. um, and so for us we thought that would that would just take something away from the the work that we're doing with the Lord to be trying to put together. We, we did think about it at a time, I, especially to get young people involved. I do see a question about getting young people involved. Sometimes um, giving a little stipend for young people, some sort of a, um, uh, like a like an intern program or something like that. I was, I was thinking about that idea at one point. I, in fact, many years ago, I was involved in, a, in, um, in, in something like that where I was paid um, a small stipend to be on the sidewalk for about a month over a summer in, in Dallas, Texas, doing sidewalk ministry. And, um, you know, I don't think it took anything away from the, the, the gift of self that I was giving out there um, necessarily. Um, but, um, but you know, I don't know. It, it's, it's a complicated thing maybe to put together and maybe it just, it, it wouldn't maybe be the best fit for what you're trying to do. At least it didn't seem to be for us. So just know that you, this can be done on a volunteer basis. And so, um, yeah, I think, I just think it's something that most people don't know is possible. And it, and it certainly is possible. That's what's going on in Rochester. I would say I kind of got this thing going from, from the ground up where I was being paid some through my job in Catholic radio, where they were kind enough to um, allow me to give a portion of my work to the, the, um, the sidewalk ministry. But a lot of the stuff that I was doing, like I was doing physical trainings like every six weeks. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I was doing things mm -hmm. that, uh, doing a lot of trial and error with various mm -hmm. things that I found a lot of stuff that didn't work. You know, I found some things that did. And so, um, but we did figure out um, when we transitioned leadership that two co-directors on a volunteer basis, focusing on these two areas of scheduling and community outreach, um, and, and then empowering sidewalk captains, that this can be done on a mm -hmm. volunteer basis. So um, Lorraine, before we get towards questions, anything on that that you wanna share, just in terms of um, you being a co-director, doing mm -hmm. it on a volunteer basis, I know you've taken on extra things, mm -hmm. especially in terms of resources, filling in some gaps with resources mm -hmm. for the pregnant moms in need. Um, so you, 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 that's been a sort of a separate call mm -hmm. that you added, mm -hmm. added more into, but anything you wanna share just about time commitment, sure. volunteers, and the possibility of actually doing this? Sure. No, that's a great question. And I think as people are think, 
listening to this, I, I, my, my prayer is that you're seeing something very attainable and not something that's so sophisticated that you don't think you can do. Because when, when Jim and, and Alan and I were all talking about how this would go forth with two co-directors, one of the, the principal um, factors was stick to getting the sidewalk filled out because there's so many things that will grab your attention and your time um, that you have to remind yourself and one another to, the goal is to end abortion. How do we get there? Many ways, but the most important thing and what we're called to do is to fill out that schedule so that there's never a time when a woman walks in that the schedule or that the sidewalk is empty. Don't take your eye off that ball and find leaders who will remind each other of that and kind of keep each other in that lane. Also, having two people is, you know, Jesus sent us out two by two or sent the disciples out two by two. It's invaluable. And I am so thankful to God for Jim and for Alan and Alan being co-director. We, we really help one another, both from a time perspective, so balancing the tasks and also just booing each other up and, and having creative ideas. You know, could you have more co-leaders? Sure. Um, could you have a director like Jim mentioned and then somebody assisting? Sure. But I think it's really important to have at least a couple people who are rallying together. Um, the reason I find that so important is because we have to be very diligent in um, our time commitment. So, you know, when Jim talked about what the time commitment expectation would be, he set an expectation. And at first it was, you know, maybe a little bit more, but then we kind of hold ourselves to that in a good way, meaning we have to be efficient in what we're doing because this could really get grow. Uh, but if we have a very specific goal, what it is that we're responsible for, what it is that we're trying to accomplish, the Lord will bless that and it'll become very fruitful. If we get tied up in things that are maybe ancillary, but still important and, and, and you know, God's um, graces will bless that as well, but we wanna be really efficient and stay focused because the, the pro-life movement, if you will, is so large and there's so many needs there. Um, but staying focused on filling out that sidewalk is critical, um, especially because we don't want to have attrition, right? So we work so hard to get the, the sidewalks filled. We don't want to lose lose that um, as well. So I would say really the co-director role is, um, and being a volunteer, I do think that there is a beauty in that because we're doing it for God's glory and you know, not for financial gain. You know, people will even say sometimes when you're out there, how much are you getting paid for this or get a job or, you know, things like that. But it really feels comforting to know like we're doing this because we love one another. And that's what Jesus calls us to do is to love one another, love the least of these. So, um, you know, I think that being a volunteer, it, it's more motivating to me because I would do this without being paid anyway. Like I don't, this is my love, my passion, my calling to to be able to to help people to make the right decision that's going to bless them and not make a decision that they're going to regret. Um, so I think being a volunteer is natural, is a natural way to approach this, I think. Yeah, very good. And as a co-director, how much time would you say on average do you spend um, volunteering each week in this That's capacity? a great question. I think people often ask me that. It's really like a, maybe an hour a week. Um, Ellen and I have maybe like a 20 minute, 30 minute discussion once a week and now that we're kind of up and running it's really maintaining the schedule so anybody who wants to come onto the schedule has changes to the schedule like I said for my particular role it's not necessarily the amount of time but I need to be responsive so that the schedule stays because it is kind of fluid at times that we're responsive to that but an hour or so um, as Jim mentioned there's there's more time that I devote to um, helping moms who have chosen life and so helping them navigate everything from housing to childcare to all other kinds of resources. But I sort of don't include that in this particular role. It's related to this, but it's time I spend outside of this particular role. If you're talking about just scheduling, it's not very much time at all. And it's, um, it's very uh, streamlined. It's kind of turnkey. So you can do this without a lot of um, time commitment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you so much for all that you're doing. Um, as we go into the open forum Q&A, we've got a few minutes for this. I just want to encourage people anything on your heart and mind tonight that you want to ask or add to the discussion you can just type it into the questions um, the questions box any questions comments that you have um, right there in that questions box in your control panel at any time um, and uh, to mention real quick before we go to questions just that last ingredient of ongoing engagement with the folks that are already on the sidewalk um, two things we identified 
would be one, um, at least a monthly email that mm. would go out um, in some capacity. And, and Lorraine, maybe you can share with us a little bit more on that, any detail you have on that. And then um, this monthly advanced training mm. um, webcast forum, mm -hmm. um, whatever you want to call it, um, this is a great way to, to, to send that out in, in a monthly email. I have that part of it um, and let people know about this. It's a great way to keep them engaged. And, and, and it's, not st it's not more work for you. Um, that's one of the great things I think we're trying to offer in doing this is that um, we can help um, carry some of that load with the basic training videos, with the advanced right. training videos, that you can just make use of those resources. Um, but anything else you wanted to share on that, Lorraine, the ongoing engagement, monthly email, anything like that? It's so important because once people come on the sidewalk or become part of this ministry, they need that constant communication. So just think of any other organization that you're a part of. You're going to want to know what's happening. You're going to want to keep a pulse on things. It keeps you motivated, right? You're part of a team. What's happening with the team? Where are the wins? Where are the losses, so to speak? Um, one of the critical parts that we have found very effective in the outreach is what is happening. So if we say, you know, local mom in need of prayer, she's going in for an abortion tomorrow. People are engaged in that as I'm so thankful and God, thank you God for, for people's commitment to, to prayer on that. But they want to know sort of what's happening and what does she need and whatever happened with Miss A, whatever. So being able to stay in touch with what's happening in our community, it's real. It's not just this, you know, philosophical or theoretical idea of helping save moms. There are real people who are, um, out there that are in need. So I think the testimonies are really helpful. I think um, enumerating what the needs are has been really powerful. So people are like, I want to help. What can I do besides going on the sidewalk so they can understand what's happening there? And also to connect them with other pro-life um, resources. So whether it's these training or whether it's a local rally that's happening or a particular pro-life um, uh, resource of uh, a book or a training that's happening that's ancillary to us or 40 days for life we sort of stay connected and tied into the the um, the local community so it's really important that especially nowadays where we're not physically together a lot to have that resource um, to be able to communicate what's happening in the community give testimonies and then also what can people do um, so we've been able to do that quite often and whenever we give the testimonies people are really um, connected to that and tied in and want to know how they can help so that it really makes it very real instead of just being like this theory of oh gee yeah there's people out there it's real people yeah terrific all right mm -hmm. well let's do the uh lightning round q a here yeah. as we're just about at the hour so we'll maybe go a few minutes over um but here we go we've got um one comment in here from patricia who says i watched the 40 days for life results webinar on tuesday and they are launching 40 days for life 365. Okay, well, that's the first I've heard of it. So that sounds great. So that might be a good um, a, a good help in your local community. Um, one thing I would keep an eye on, though, with that is that, remember, though, the nature of 40 Days for Life, um, the 40 Days for Life campaign, it is, it is prayer, and it is not the sidewalk counseling component. Mm -hmm. Now, many mm -hmm. campaigns, many local campaigns, the way they use their 40 Days for Life um, they still got sidewalk counselors who are out there reaching out, but but some do not, and that's not mm -hmm. part of what they do. You know, they're they're trying to again stick in their lane, which their lane is get people out there to pray, to pray, to pray. And so we're saying though, if we're really going to do our best as the hands and feet of Christ out there, yes, we need that foundation of prayer out there, but we also need the loving outreach. Um, so that's what we're trying to also help build up so so i think some of the things that we're adding here would be a nice complement to that so um again the goal is in our local communities um stepping up to lead stepping up to help and saying okay here's the goal um at least one sidewalk counselor at least one prayer partner year round every single hour these places are open how do we get there so if 40 days for life is doing 365 and there's a way you can implement that great if that doesn't get you all the way there then figure out what you need to do to kind of um, complement it and get all the way there. But the main thing is it's simple, just catch the vision of that goal and um, you know, and, and whatever it takes to achieve that goal. So um, figure out what, what you got to work with around you. And, um, and that might be a helpful thing, whatever they're doing there. I'm looking forward to learning more about that. Um, anything else that you'd want to share on that, Lorraine? I would say don't give up, right? So if there's other, if there's, if there's other, 
initiatives going on, just either connect in with that, or if it seems like things are petering out because 40 Days for Life or other programs are, are over because that time period, don't give up, be the leader, don't wait for somebody else to go out and do it, do it. I mean, it's so it's that important. You have to find a way to, to really get that, that fire in your belly to go out there and continue to do it, to continue to grow the ministry. It's so, so important. Lives are hanging in the balance. We can't, we can't afford to have empty sidewalks um, at all. So do everything you can with maximum determination and just don't give up. Yeah. And one of the things I think that lit the fire in us to say yes, to even do these videos and, and share some of what we have learned has been just the need that we have seen that we've mm -hmm. felt being on the ground to just have someone empowering the grassroots local effort where instead of like um, an organization that's saying, okay, right. here's the model and then kind of handing it off um, top down, we want to give you some best practices and we want to give you some goals and some vision, but, but we think you ought to be free and, and turn loose to figure out what's going to mm -hmm. work in your community and what's the best way to do it to achieve that goal. Um, and remember, the vision is if, if we can be out there with that effective loving outreach and prayer year round, we're going to be able to minister to everybody going in and out. And we're going to be able to help mm -hmm. as many people as will allow us to help them. And that's turning people away from these local centers. And that's hurting their ability mm -hmm. to keep their budget going. And that's why ultimately um, they will close down if we can turn enough people away. So we're ministering to as many people as we possibly can while it's ongoing. But also mm -hmm. while we're doing that, we're effectively doing the work to stop people from um, accessing their services and to shut right. them down. So that really is the goal. That's why um, we've identified that as the goal, um, having the loving outreach component that is effective and also the prayer. Um, so whatever it takes to get there, go and do it. We're not asking you to, to have some sort of like a, um, uh, a love will end abortion affiliate. We don't, have a, a, we don't have anything set up for that. We don't have some fundraising apparatus for that. I know that's the model that other people do. And if that works, great. Whatever works, let's mm -hmm. do it. Um, but we just saw there, there's some gap here that somebody needs to step into and just share it, give it away for free, empower mm -hmm. people. So that's our role in this, and that's what we're seeking to do. Um, all right, we've got uh, a couple here. It says, do you have any ideas to get younger people to plug in, meaning college age, um, 20-somethings? And... Um, yeah, I, I don't know. Lorraine, anything jump mm -hmm. out to you? I have not seen anything super effective, sadly, in, mm -hmm. in what I've done to try to get um, college age 20 somethings out there. I've spoken to groups of them and um, haven't seen a uh, big response. So I, I'm just, you know, I, that's one thing that I have not figured out what is um, what is effective mm -hmm. yet in, in terms of doing that. But Lorraine, anything on that to share? Yeah, I would say that in Rochester, there's pockets of it. Um, I'm proud to say that there's um, several individuals who are growing in their development of um, pro-life ministries on campus with Students for Life. So plugging into some already existing organizations can help. And then also matching that with sort of the open house, right? So having people from that group come in when we already have people out on the sidewalk, also inviting them to um, I don't think we talked specifically about this or at length in the, the session just now, but having when we have these rallies. So when there's a lot of people that come together, sometimes there's like sort of safety in numbers, if you will, or people that are um, young adults would, may be wanting to go do something that there's a group of people doing or that they can bring their group to where it's not just them on the sidewalk by themselves. And food, <laughs> food always helps, you know, feeding people, um, bringing them together in a way that, you know, just... Um, meets them where they are and just making it something that's fun for them to be able to do. Not that being out on the sidewalk in an abortion clinic is fun, but but connecting with them in a way that is meaningful to them so they can do it as part of their college life or young adults. Um, also bringing your children with you because they are the future that will then be going out on their own. Um, you know, my children go out when we go out with groups. Um, I know a lot of people bring their children out. So when people see that, they also associate it with the, something that would be appropriate for all age groups. And I think when we show our children that this is a universal issue and not just an issue for a certain class of people, it becomes natural for them to then grow into that. Yeah, and that, that is the, the, the only effective thing that I have mm -hmm. found is to bring my own kids out right, there. The right. is, is that they want to come out there. Yes. They want to be with me out there. And they the gospel is coming alive 
for them out there, they're so watching true. what I'm doing and they're seeing what's going on and they're part of it. They're also mm -hmm. praying out there and, and holding a, a sign of outreach. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it really is beautiful. And then yes, other other families see that and, um, and may bring their young people out um, from their families as well. So I think that's the only thing I've seen um, personally that's been uh, effective or, or within uh, my control <laughs> as far as, uh, bringing right. young people out. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, a couple ideas here. One is just uh, open house week would be great around um, January January 22nd, the anniversary of, mm -hmm. of Roe mm -hmm. and, and Doe. And uh, yes, yeah, that makes sense. And then also it says here um, maybe do something like a like a golf date where you spend two hours together on the sidewalk and then say um, I'll buy you lunch after and we can yeah. be brief. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. I've never, I, I, I guess I don't get invited to those golf dates, but uh, if anybody ever wants to invite me to have one of those golf dates, that sounds great. But, uh, but no, that sounds like a great model to, um, to, yeah, say, hey, come on out, let's hang, let's do this for two hours and then we'll have lunch after and talk about it. Um, yeah, that's the personal relationship, that personal invitation. That's awesome. Um, and that's that part of what was successful in Greece. So not, that's why I was saying we need to have more than just one person there. So we'll talk about what are your, uh, what are your biggest questions before we'll actually even inter encounter anybody? So people are like, okay, this is what's on my mind. So it's really a tr on the on the ground mm -hmm. training session. What are you thinking about? What do you think is going to happen? And then we ask other people who are there praying, what were your concerns when you came? And then we do do like a debrief. They happen to be a pizza place right next door to the place. So we would go there and we would say, well, what did you think? And, you know, how was it different than what you thought it would be like? So just really engage them in a way that, okay, this is real. This is what I was thinking. This is how it's different. Um, and then, you know, overcome anything that they might be concerned about for next time. And then they can share that with others too. I think being able to articulate what it is that you're concerned about helps you to put those fears aside because we all have these concerns and fears that if we just acknowledge, you can overcome them. So yeah, that's a great way that we've actually been able to have people stay committed and be part of a group, right? So, okay, what did you think about it or debrief? Yeah, golfing we haven't done, but you know, pizza, or coffee, and stuff, <laughs> see whatever it takes. Yeah. yeah, very good. All right, got a question here on um, local pregnancy centers restrict volunteers to not be a visible part of 40 Days for Life street ministries. Any success stories to change this? Um, I, I, I'm thinking the question here is any success stories in terms of local pregnancy centers that do allow their volunteers freedom to be a visible part, um, I, and then that works well. I, I'm guessing here the um, the hesitation or the limitation that maybe a local pregnancy center would um, would do some sort of a restriction like that on their volunteers would be because they think that's going to make them somehow not look the way they want to position themselves in, in the community where they mm -hmm. can kind of steer clear of what is maybe viewed as more aggressive or more confrontational even though it really isn't it's just bringing the gospel um right there right there encountering them right as they're walking and it's just an extension of what the pregnancy resource center is doing but bringing it extended out onto the sidewalk um so i don't know i would just share that vision that um, you know, this is what it is. Now, the, the leader of the pregnancy center probably knows that and they probably catch that vision and they're probably good with what's going on on the sidewalk and they understand it and they don't have those um, uh, misnomers or false stereotypes, but they do have to deal with maybe a base of people that funds the pregnancy center that they do have maybe some of those false stereotypes. So they try to, they're trying to figure out how to um, navigate all of that. So, um, uh, so I have sympathy uh, or empathy for the position they're in. I'm sure it's a difficult one, um, but I would think that if they would allow the freedom for the volunteers to go out, be a part of it, and even to promote it, um, I think that helps change the perspective in the community, help change the perspective of those people that maybe are on their donor list and be courageous in helping them to come around and see the truth of what really is happening on the sidewalk, um, because we've got to make this, we've got to normalize what's going on on the sidewalk. This ought to be as common for a Christian as going to a soup kitchen mm -hmm. or any other work of mercy, work of service, um, you know, and so we've got to do that work too. So I just want to encourage if you're, if you know any local pregnancy um, center directors or if you are one, um, be brave in this and trying to be a part of normalizing the good work that is being done. Um, it, it is essential and, and it is very, very good. So try to do what you can to 
to empower that and, and, and grow that. Um, again, this is kind of, if you, if you think of it in business terms, which it's not, this is ministry, but um, it's sort of like a, your sales force for a local pregnancy yeah. center. They're the ones that are going out and letting people know you exist yeah. and right. bringing people back to you. So, um, so they should work hand in hand and be very complimentary. I don't know of um, maybe the, the success stories in terms of how lo any local pregnancy center directors have really done a great job. And in, 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 I'm sure that they exist. I'm sure there's probably lots of examples of this. Um, I just, I, nothing jump, is jumping out to the top of, top of my mind to share with you right now. But if you're, and also if you're asking about success stories um, about what goes on on the sidewalk, I would just point you to Lovell and Abortion Dot com. There's videos on the homepage that are some beautiful success stories and, and share the vision of what the sidewalk's all about. All of our training videos do that as well. And specifically our last training video, last month's advanced training on the baby registries and baby showers, we, we did a little bit more in detail of some of those stories that we have on the website. We, we shared a little bit more of those testimonies from those um, families that we've helped those, and, the, and the women that we've helped. And, um, and so go, go back and check that out for a little bit more in depth, specifically um, in connecting those moms on the sidewalk from the encounter um, to helping them to, to get the resources that they need and walking with them from there. I think you'll find that very valuable and that'd be a great thing to share. All this stuff is free and available. You don't have to pay anything to access it. It's all on YouTube and um, levelandabortion.com, my YouTube channel, Jim Havens, it's all listed there. Um, but um, share this stuff generously. We got to start breaking these false stereotypes about what uh, what this ministry is all about. Lorraine, anything you'd want to add on this? I would just compliment what you said, Jim, is, um, you know, touching on the, about the pregnancy centers. It's It should be natural for those who are serving women in that medically based or material based to also be out on the sidewalk. It's two sides to the same coin. And boy, wouldn't it be beautiful if literally women saw the same people out on the sidewalk that they then go see in a pregnancy center. I know when we've been able to help moms, they literally want us to come with them into the exam room. So they, they see this as a person that you trust. So there's no reason why people who are part of a pregnancy center, even a medically based pregnancy center, can't be out there um, doing the same exact thing. In fact, how beautiful would it be that the nurse that you're gonna then see is kind of drawing you into someplace that's um, life affirming and loving and medically based. It's just, a, it's just a natural thing. There is the stereotype of that it's radical people out there, but um, that would be a beautiful way to, to overcome that. And those things that people have as myths um, you can see out on the sidewalk that that's just what they are, that there's mostly people out there loving moms and bringing them into a pregnancy center is, is the natural thing to do. So I, I think that pregnancy centers sometimes have a specific model that they're following, but I think that they're two sides of the same coin and they can complement each other in a beautiful way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, very good. Yeah. All right, I know we're we're quite a bit over, so we'll uh, we'll wrap it up here. But thank you for all the, the comments and questions. Um, one thing I want to mention, I'm not sure yet about next month's training in December. Um, just not sure. We haven't we haven't scheduled anything yet or, or nailed down any topic. And since it is December or around Christmas time, um, you're just not even sure if, if we should go ahead and do it or not. So we're discerning that right mm -hmm. now. So we'll see. We'll, we'll keep you updated on that. But um, Lorraine, any final comment that you'd want to share with us tonight? I would just say thank you to all of those of you who are on this and then those of you who will join and see this at another time and just stay committed and pray on what your role and how the Lord is going to use your talents because they're needed. We need you. We need you out on the sidewalk. We need you using your talents to get other people on the sidewalk. And then just as Jim said, always be inviting when people talk to you and say, hey, what are your plans for this weekend? Talk to them about what you're doing in the pro-life ministry. Don't be embarrassed to talk about it. Don't you know, be apologetic because I have found that so many people I talk to from, from neighbors who see my level end abortion sign to uh, you know, all kinds of people will then engage and say, wow, that's something that I want to be part of. So don't be timid. Get it out there. The Lord will bless you for it. Yes. Yeah, God will come alive in you mm -hmm. on the sidewalk mm -hmm. in perhaps a way that you've never seen him come alive in you before. Right. Um, so this is, um, I, I, in my experience, this is going to bring the gospel alive for you mm -hmm. in a way that um, is really um it's really helpful to us to draw closer to the Lord by yeah. seeing yes. the reality of all this and seeing how he works mm -hmm. through us to reach out 
and, and go love our neighbor. He, he's real. This is real. He wants to use us as his hands and feet to encounter mm -hmm. people that would never be reached otherwise mm -hmm. uh, in situations that, um, that they're in life and death, um, traumatic situations um, mm -hmm. that he wants to break into, right? And so he wants to use us to, to bring them there and to use us to break into these situations for them, at least to make the offer and allow them the freedom of, um, of turning to somebody. Again, that empty sidewalk, that should be an image that haunts us. Whenever that thing is empty, there's nobody there to even make the offer. Mm -hmm. There's nobody there for her to even turn to. There's no advocate even trying on the side of the, of the child and that mom um, mm -hmm. or for that worker, the dignity of the abortionist, even to try to tell him or her that there's a better way. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that we, we've got to eliminate the empty sidewalk outside of these local abortion centers. Um, and, and finally, I did see that one comment or, or one question that we didn't get to was, what is the job of a sidewalk counselor? Mm -hmm. Again, I just want to point you to the other training videos. The scope of this one was specifically on um, how to um, just get that year round coverage, that, that full sidewalk coverage. Um, year round. Um, so that's trying to, to, that's sort of what we've been sticking to here. But in the other training videos, um, we really dive into the nuts and bolts, the details on sidewalk counseling and, and many topics there. So the basic training videos, the advanced training videos, I think they'll be, um, th they'll be helpful to you. So I want to point you there again, lovelandabortion.com or YouTube channel is Jim Havens and you'll find them there as well. All right, Lorraine, uh, would you mind closing us out with a prayer? I would be happy to. Thank you. Good and gracious God, we thank you for this time together. Lord, we pray that hearts and minds will be turned towards life. Lord, we look to you for all of our vision of, of what it is that you have set out for us. We ask you, Lord, to help guide us in living the gospel, not just reading the gospel, not just praying, but making our life a prayer, oh Lord. And we, we ask you, Lord, to have mercy on us for all the things that we have failed to do to help end abortion, Lord. We just ask you, please raise up all the moms who have abortion appointments, change their hearts, that they would love their baby and not be turned away from their baby. Lord, embolden those who feel called to be on the sidewalk, to be out there in your name, being your hands and feet, Lord. And we ask you all of this in Jesus' name, we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's love enough to do more. God bless you. Amen. God bless. Thank you.